I want to talk to you today about a woman who has been destroying Christian men, and not just Christian men, but all men, for a long time. And God doesn't want this woman to destroy you, and I'm going to call her out by name today. Her name is the adulterous woman. But what is adultery? Of course, adultery is when somebody has relations with somebody that is not their spouse. That is adultery. But in the Bible, yes, adultery is that. But this adulterous woman represents much more. She represents the ways of the world. See, in the Bible, the church is also represented as a woman. But this woman is a faithful bride. The church should be faithful to the Lord. That doesn't mean you're perfect. That doesn't mean you're flawless. But you're living a holy life. What does the word holy mean? It means you're living a separated life. You're not living for the ways of the world. You're living for God. You might have battles. You might have struggles. But you're living for God. You're living to give him honor. You're living to give him glory. That is the church. A bride. A faithful bride. But the ways of the world in the Bible is compared to an adulterous woman. So pay attention here because this woman has been destroying many men for thousands of years. And we've seen it in these past days, in these past years. We've seen many men of God, many preachers, many teachers, many Christian men have been destroyed by this woman. And let me tell you, she's just not after the big time preachers. She's also after you. So pay attention to what the scripture tells us here in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 4 through 27. This is God. And he's given us the formula how to avoid this adulterous woman. Remember, what does this adulterous woman represent? The ways of the world. How the ways of the world does not want you to live a separated life from God. The ways of the world wants you just to live a carnal life. A life after your own cares, after your own desires, after your own carnal fleshly desires. That's how this adulterous woman wants you to live. Why? Because that type of lifestyle would take you to destruction. But when you live a life separated for the Lord, even though you might have battles, even though you might have struggles, but when you live a life separated for the Lord, that life is going to take you to victory. That life is going to take you to eternal life. So pay attention because God has given us the formula how to defeat this adulterous woman, how to overcome this adulterous woman. And we find it in the book of wisdom, Proverbs chapter 7, verse 4 through 27. Look what the Lord is telling us. Say to wisdom, you are my sister and call insight your intimate friend. First thing he's telling you is this, you got to seek wisdom. You got to make wisdom close to you like a relative. You got to want to walk in wisdom. Don't just live a life of carelessness. Don't just live a life of laziness. You have to get wisdom close to you. And what is the beginning of wisdom? The fear of the Lord. Do you know that when you respect God, respecting God is going to help you avoid many, many mistakes. That can bring destruction to your life. Did you know that? By respecting the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Let me tell you. It's a smart thing not to play with fire. And it's a smart thing that if you don't know how to swim, it's a smart thing not to jump into the ocean. And it's a very smart thing not to play with God. To respect Him. And look what else he continues to say. To keep you from the forbidden woman. Who's going to keep us from this forbidden woman? God is. Wisdom. To keep you from the forbidden woman. From the adulteress with her smooth words. Something about this adulterous woman, this forbidden woman. If you listen long enough to her, she's going to get you, man. She's going to get you. Why do you think Joseph, when Potiphar's wife grabbed Joseph and said, Come lie with me. Lay down with me. Why do you think Joseph didn't stay and talk with her? What does the scripture say? Joseph ran. Because Joseph was a man. And if Joseph would have stayed there long enough, this woman with her smooth words would have seduced him. I want to tell you that the ways of the world has smooth words. And if we listen to the ways of the world long enough, the ways of the world will seduce you. That's why God is saying, make wisdom your close friend. Look what else he continues to say. For at the window of my house, I have looked through my lattice. You know who this represents? He's saying, I, I was at the top of my house and I saw through my lattice. And he's going to say a young man that he's seen who's listening to this adulterous woman. This represents God. Scripture says that the eyes of the Lord are roaming the earth, seeking someone to bless. God sees everything from his throne in heaven. So look what God is seeing that's going on here on earth. He says, I have looked through my lattice, and I have seen among the simple, I have perceived among the youth, a young man lacking sense. In other words, a dummy. I've seen a dummy. And why is he a dummy? 
Not because he doesn't know what 2 plus 2 is. And not because he doesn't know geometry. And not because he doesn't know algebra. And not because he doesn't know chemistry. And not because he doesn't know simple things. No. He says, I've seen a dummy. And why is he calling him a dummy? Why is he calling him a young man lacking sense? Because this is a young man that is not walking in the fear of the Lord. Let me tell you something. You can be very intellectually sophisticated. You can be very articulate. You can be extremely intelligent, but you can be a big dummy. And how will you be a big dummy? When you live a life not walking and respecting God, you will make stupid choices. You will make dumb decisions. But remember, when you have wisdom close to you and when you walk in the fear of the Lord, that's going to help you avoid many, many things. But look at this adulterous woman. She's looking for dummies. In other words, she's looking for people that are not walking in the fear of the Lord. Look what happens. Passing along the street, near her corner, getting too close to places you have no business being close to. Taking the road to her house, in the twilight, in the evening, at the time of night, in darkness. Living in dark times, walking in darkness, around shady areas. She is the shady lady. She is the adulterous woman, and she works in darkness. And who's walking around there? The dummy. The young man lacking sense. The man that's not walking in the fear of the Lord. Getting too close to the shadowy areas. Look what the scripture continues to say. And behold, the woman meets him, dressed as a prostitute. Wily of heart. What does that mean? Loud. Boisterous. Looking like he's about to have a good time. Meets him dressed as a prostitute, wily of heart. She is loud, wayward. Her feet do not stay at home. What does this tell you? The ways of the world is just trying to find the next one. Uh, there's been so many, so many celebrities, so many athletes. There's been so many artists that this adulterous woman seduces. And then just look at it. Just look at famous artists. Just look at famous celebrities. How at one time they were on this mountaintop. But then now they're in this destruction. They're in this death valley. They're in this valley of dry bones. But at one time they were on the, on the pinnacle. At one time they were at the top, top of their success. But they listened to the ways of the world and she destroyed them. Her feet don't stay at home. She's not faithful to no one. She's just looking for the next one. Let me tell you something about the ways of the world. The ways of the world does not care about you. The ways of the world doesn't care about marriages. The ways of the world doesn't care about families, doesn't care about children, doesn't care about your mental health. The ways of the world does not care about you at all. The ways of the world only cares about itself. And once it uses you, and once it leaves you in the valley of dry bones, it'll move on to the next one. Her feet don't stay at home. Let's continue to listen. Now in the street, now in the market, and at every corner she lies in wait. She's just looking for the next victim. This ways of the world, this adulterous woman. She seizes him and kisses him. And with bold face, she says to him, I had to offer sacrifices, and today I have paid my vows. So now I have come out to meet you, to seek you eagerly, and I have found you. Now, is that true? Like, was she seeking him? No, she wasn't seeking him. Scripture says that she was in the, in the corner. Scripture says that she was in the marketplace. Scripture says that she was in the city. She was just looking around, and she grabbed him, she kissed him. She said, I've been looking for you. Where you been all my life? Yeah, she's been looking for him. But because he's a big dummy, not that she's been looking for him by name. She was looking for him because he's a big dummy who's going to listen. The ways of the world is looking for people who are not walking in the fear of God. And the ways of the world will grab you. And the ways of the world will seduce you. And the ways of the world will tell you, you're going to have an amazing life if you just live the way you want. If you just live according to your fleshly desires, you're going to have an amazing life. Because if you keep living a faithful life, if you keep living a separated life for the Lord, if you keep living a Christian life, your life is going to be miserable. But if you live the way you want to live, you're going to live an amazing life. That's what this adulterous woman wants to tell people. Look what, look what continues to happen. I have spread my couch with my coverings, colored linens from Egyptian linen. Why Egyptian linen? Because Egypt in the scripture represents the fields of sin, represents the ways of the world. And what does she have her bed covered with? The couch, meaning her bed. What does she have it covered with? With the ways of the world. With bondage to sin. But this young man doesn't know that. Look what the scripture continues to say. I have perfumed my bed. Listen, it doesn't matter how much perfume you put on sin, it still stinks. It doesn't matter how much perfume you put out here on a piece of poop, it's still going to be a piece of poop. Let me tell you something about sin. It doesn't matter how good you might try to make it seem. It doesn't matter how good the world might try to make it seem. It doesn't matter how good someone else might try to make it seem. 
it's still junk, it's still trash. No matter how much perfume you put on it, it's still trash. Look what happens here. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love till morning, and let us delight ourselves with love. She's trying to paint a mental picture in his head. Something about the devil, if he can't get you with fear and discouragement, he's going to try to get you with these pleasures and these sensualities. He's going to try to paint pictures in your mind of what it could probably be like if you start living, you know, just push the things of God a little bit away and don't, don't, don't be so dedicated to the things of God. And, and he tries to paint pictures in your mind. Oh, you'll make more money. Oh, you, you'll reach more success. If only you were just to stop going to church so much, stop being a Christian so much, man, you'd be able to make a lot more money. We're going to have love till morning. That's what she's saying. No, look what happens. For my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He took a bag of money with him and at full moon he will come. Do you know what she's trying to tell him? He ain't going to be home. There's not going to be consequences. You're just going to, we're just going to hook up and it's going to be amazing. That's what the world wants to tell people. That's what this adulterous woman, the ways of the world, wants to tell Christians. No, what's the consequence? Nothing's going to happen. You're just going to enjoy your life. That's all that's going to be going on. You're just going to be enjoying your life. But look what happens here. With much seductive speech, she persuades him. She persuades him. She convinces him. Do you know that if a person listens to the ways of the world long enough, they will be convinced that they're in the right direction. There's a lot of people that are convinced that they're doing the right thing and they're walking towards destruction. <laughs> Let's continue to read. With much seductive speech, she persuades him. With her smooth talk, she compels him. Meaning she manipulates him. She basically is puppeting him with her smooth speech. And at once, he follows her. And as an ox goes to the slaughter, or as a stag is caught fast, meaning an arrow hit in the liver, till an arrow pierces its liver, or as a bird rushes into a snare, he does not know that it will cost him his life. In other words, this whole time she was playing him. Can I tell you that the ways of the world is trying to play you? And the ways of the world promises you so much, but then what happens? It takes him like a, 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 a ox to the slaughter. It shoots an arrow in his liver, like the way they shoot a, a bow at a deer, or, or they catch him in a net, the way they catch a bird in a net. It says that this ways of the world wants to destroy you. The ways of the world wants to destroy you. But who is speaking wisdom to you today? God, through his word. He's telling you, don't listen to the seductive speech of the ways of the world. You keep walking in separation for the Lord. You keep walking respecting God. Scripture says everything you do for the Lord will never be in vain. When you serve God, your life is going to be blessed. Even though you might go through the valleys of the shadow of death, but remember what's on the other side, a table prepared for you in the presence of your enemies. Look what happens here. And now, O oh sons, listen to me. Be attentive to my words and my mouth. In other words, stop listening to her. Listen to me. That's what God is saying. Listen to me. Don't listen to her. Listen to me. Let not your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths. For many a victim has she laid low, and all her slain are a mighty throng. You know what he's saying? Pay attention to me. Because this woman, you ain't the first one. She already has a pile. That's what throng means. She already has a pile, a stack of people that she has destroyed. Can you imagine? She has a stack, a pile, a mountain, a hill of people that she's already destroyed. The ways of the world? It's just moving on to the next one. The pleasures of the world? It's just moving around, jumping around to the next one. Don't let it destroy you. And how can you stand in victory when you respect God, when you listen to the word of the Lord? It says, all her slain are a mighty throng, meaning a giant pile. Her house is the way to Sheol, meaning hell, going down to the chambers of death. He's saying, don't follow her because she's going to hell. She's going down to the chambers of death. But what did Jesus say? I have come to give you life and life in abundance. Jesus came to give you life. The ways of the world wants to give you death. Who are you going to follow? Scripture says, call wisdom your relative. Keep it near to you. And what is the beginning of wisdom? The fear of the Lord. Walk in the ways of the Lord. Don't listen to the ways of the world. Remember, when you live for God, you will have the victory. God is surrounding you. And God is protecting you. And if there's something in your life that you need to repent of, repent. God will forgive you the way he says in 1 John. It says that he is faithful and just to forgive you and wash you 
of all unrighteousness when you confess your sins to him. And maybe you might be in the grasp of the ways of the world right now. And maybe you might have been listening to the ways of the world right now. But this video brought conviction to your life. Say, Lord, help me. and Separate yourself from the ways of the world. And you will have the victory in Jesus' name. I hope this video was a blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor, please. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great blessing to your life. So press the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if you want to help this video reach more and more people, press the like button. The more people that press the like button, the more people this video will reach. And that's what it's about, reaching people for Jesus Christ. And if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, you can do so in one of two ways. The first way looks something like this. It's called Super Thanks. Super Thanks is a feature that YouTube provides for creators so that if a viewer or a subscriber wants to show their appreciation, they can do so through the Super Thanks feature at the bottom of your screen. Or when you try to leave a comment, it pops out next to the comment box. It's called Super Thanks. Those are always a great blessing to my life. They're always greatly appreciated. The second way you can show your appreciation, and this is on a monthly basis, it's called channel memberships. The channel memberships that I offer in my channel is $5 a month, about $1.25 a week. And in return, you get special badges, special stickers, and access to archive videos that are available for channel members. If that's something you're interested in, click the link in my description. Channel memberships are also a great blessing to my life. And before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos. I hope and I pray that they will continue to be a great encouragement to your life. God bless you.